After College podcast powered by KSLSports.com. I'm your host, Kyle Ireland. And this week on the podcast, we're going to be recapping week 17, the final week of the regular season. It is now playoff time in the NFL. And alongside me for the ride today, I wanted to have along with me the host of the Crimson Corner podcast, our Utah Utes insider, the one and only Trevor Allen. Trevor, how are you doing? Welcome back to the podcast. Kyle, it's always good to be on this podcast. Other than the the uh, Crimson Corner podcast, this is the, my 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 favorite podcast. Not only to listen to, but to be a guest host on. Well, I appreciate that. I know that you you have to love your podcast, your own podcast first and foremost. But to have this one be second in your heart means a lot to me, Trevor. But the reason why I wanted to have you on the pod this week is because you know this week seventeen was a really interesting one for me, covering on Sunday, watching Alex Smith. A bunch of these local guys in the NFL, you know, have playoff bids on the line. But I also wanted to have you on to look ahead to these playoff matchups because every single game in the wild card this week has a local player from the state of Utah participating in the weekend matchup. So wanted to have you on to talk about those Utah guys. But let's start off with Alex Smith and the Washington football team because they entered that game on Sunday Night Football on KSL TV. You were able to watch that game. And uh, it, it was a crazy one because Washington had a playoff bid on the line. They needed to win that game against the Eagles. And then, you know, Alex Smith was able to start that game after missing a few games with a calf strain. And we all know his injury history. So that was something to keep an eye on. But then midway through that game, Philadelphia benches Jalen Hurts. They bring in Nate Sudfield. They end up losing the game 20 to 14. And there was a bunch of talk. Hey, were the Eagles, you know, tanking the game? you know, was Washington, you know, potentially going to lose that game. New York would be in the giants would have a playoff spot. So there was a lot in that game, but I thought it was cool. You know, we'll start off with just Alex Smith there to start it off. Alex Smith able to have a pretty good game. I mean, through a couple of interceptions, but you know, it was cool to see Alex Smith overcome another injury. He was able to play the game, the entire game, 22 of 32 passing, 162 yards, a couple of touchdowns to go with those two interceptions, but they were able to get the win, move to seven and nine and end up taking that division. And now they're in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, uh, uh, it, it, you know, I actually tweeted this out um, on Sunday uh, after you uh, posted your locals in the NFL uh, story. And basically the movie about Alex Smith is writing itself. Um, you just look at, at what he's gone through and then, you know, having to miss a couple of games. And then you have the whole Dwayne Haskins saga where they finally just kicked him to the curb. And, you know, he, he wasn't in the fold for, for the Washington football team uh, in, in the future, which means more time for Alex Smith um, to potentially mold a, another quarterback coming in, depending on if they go pick one up in the 2021 20, NFL draft. But just to see how, how he played, he had he made some tremendous throws. There were some where you and I were just, you know, t- and back and forth of how how great some of his throws were and then on those picks I mean you know you never want to see that but uh a lot of them I I don't think either of them were Alex's fault technically Uh, I I know on his second one it was a bobbled um catch uh, attempt by the uh, wide receiver and ended up getting picked off but you know as they always say about Alex he's a great game manager but in this case he's leading a team that is down in the dumps um to to you know a, a division title taking him to the playoffs after coming off of an injury that is so horrific and to where he could have lost his life or his leg or, you know, both, frankly. And um, just to see what he's been able to do to lead the football team. Um, And when he comes in and he was listed as the uh, third, third string quarterback, and then to uh, work his way up to becoming the starter. And then that's where things start clicking with, with Washington and to get to the playoffs, you can't write a better story than that. Yeah, so Washington finishes the season seven and nine, making the playoff division title. All that's great, but they don't make that without Alex Smith, in my opinion. Because with Alex Smith as their starter this this season, they went five and one. I mean, I, I think that's just remarkable to see the the progress that they made just by having a competent quarterback come in. Hey, you can call him a game manager. You can call him, you know, a mediocre quarterback. Whatever it is. He's coming off of a a crazy injury to be able to even play football this season was a a miracle in and of itself. But what he was able to do on the field after that was just spectacular and just really cool to follow along this entire season, his story. We'll talk about more about Washington and their playoff odds coming up a little bit later in the podcast. But I wanted to get your thoughts on the other side of that game because Philadelphia, you know, Doug Peterson after the game, their head coach, 
hey, we weren't tanking that game. We didn't bench Jalen Hurts because we were trying to lose that game on purpose. We really just thought that Nate Sudfield gave us the best chance to win. Do you buy that argument or did Philadelphia actually, you know, toss that game there at the end? Philly definitely tossed it. Um, You know, coaches are going to say that because they don't want to be criticized the way that they are. And I believe that that Doug, Doug Peterson feels like his seat's warm, even though the Eagles have said he'll be back next year. His seat's really warm. And, you know, for them to have this big time quarterback with, with a, a Wentz and then he goes out with an injury and then comes back and then, you know, they're, they're just okay. And Wentz is playing just okay. And, um, and then Jalen Hurts ends up get, getting drafted. I think it was what, second or third round. And, you know, ended up playing well once they, they put him in the lineup and they were winning some games. And I know that they didn't have anything on the line um, for this game, Kyle, but it wasn't like they were waiting to play a playoff game. It wasn't like you were, you were the Kansas City Chiefs and, you know, Mahomes is out because you're, you're resting them to get ready for, for the playoffs. They had nothing to, do, they had nothing to lose. They weren't going to make the playoffs um, no matter what happened. And, you know, you're either all in on, on throwing the game or you're out of it. I mean, the fact that you bring in the third string quarterback, I mean, technically Wentz was the, the uh, backup to Jalen Hurts. They didn't even bring him in. And, you know, the, the fact that usually in, in this week, Kyle, we all know backups play a lot. But that's, but that's because teams who have clinched playoff berths are resting guys. But why not play all of your starters, try and, and, and end the season with a win um, you know, it just blows my mind. The fact that Philly would not do that and of what you're doing as a coach. And again, I've never been an NFL coach, high school coach, as far as football, I have, I have for, for basketball, I've, I've coached AU and stuff, but that, that's not the point. But the fact that these guys get paid and they also, you know, fans pay to wear your gear for tickets whenever we're not in the middle of a, 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 a pandemic, but you can't be throwing games like this when guys, especially your, your starters give you so much for, for you throughout the year. The least you can do is to coach them and try and lead them to a win to end the season so that you don't have that hanging over your head going into 2021. Now, you know, it is what it is with, with, with Philly. I think it was absolute garbage, but I also feel like that, you know, it, it's good for Washington for them to get into the playoffs. If I'm the Giants, I'm pissed, and I know that uh, Joe Judge was pissed um, after the game. But it, it uh, to me, it wasn't right, and you're not you're not treating the game right when you're doing something like that, especially when you 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 weren't going to go to the playoffs. But at least you owe it to your players for what they've done throughout this whole season especially with, you know, not, not having to go out or not able to go out to parties and, and hanging out with, with uh, family members during the holidays and things like that. You're making a lot of sacrifices. You couldn't even give them that. I think that's well put by you. Uh, he's Trevor Allen, the host of the Crimson Corner podcast, our Utah Utes insider here at kslsports.com. Follow him on Twitter at Trevor A. Sports. A couple other things I want to touch on with you on week 17, Trevor, before we take a quick break. Uh, you've got a couple more Utah guys I wanted to talk about their performances to finish out the regular season. You've got Matt Gay, Los Angeles Rams kicker. He ended up making three field goals in LA's 18-7 to win over the Arizona Cardinals. Now the Cardinals, they were fighting for their playoff lives towards the end of the season here. Matt Gay starts off the year, you know, gets waived by the, the Bucks. And he lands with the Rams, and now he's going to be in the playoffs. It, what do you make of just Matt Gay's, you know, emergence back in the NFL? You know, it, it looked like he wasn't going to find a spot there for a minute, but ends up making the uh, the Rams roster. They sign him, and he's been pretty effective for them down the stretch. You know, I just feel like that, you know, I, for one, I was shocked when uh, T- Tampa Bay decided to cut him, um, especially when you spend, what was it, a fourth or a fifth round pick on him? And, and for him to get cut uh, shortly after, um, you know, a season. So I just feel like that, you know, for him to – and he ends up landing with the, with, with the Colts practice squad, and, but then it ended up he – didn't, he didn't get any kind of chance there. But then the Rams had an opening, and he really made, made the most of it. I, I think he's only missed a couple of field goals um, for them. And, you know, it, it's kind of back to the way he was from when he was at Utah. I mean, 
he didn't have a great rookie year, but it was his first year in the league. I mean, things are so different. I mean, PATs are different and, you know, the, the whole pressure is different from college compared to the pros. And so I think that, that Matt's uh, handled it very, very well. Um, especially after, you know, things were looking really, really good after being drafted by Tampa Bay. And then after that, you know, it, it was kind of up in the air and then ends up losing the job and uh, he's landed himself. And, you know, I feel like if, if LA doesn't want him back, I think that there's a, a team out there in the league that will want him. Last guy I wanted to mention was Chase Hansen, uh, former Utah great, now with the New Orleans Saints, uh, linebacker for the Saints. He was elevated from the practice squad to the active roster this last week for the regular season finale. I, I just wanted to get your perspective on Chase as a person because he's been battling injuries throughout his you know football career. But to be able to get elevated last week to the active roster, I thought it was just a cool moment for him, a cool moment for you know a guy like me covering the locals in the NFL. And I know for you, someone who covered him throughout his Utah career, can you just speak to you know Chase? Chase's work ethic and just kind of what it's been, you know, for him to be able to have, you know, this moment to be able to try and make the NFL and, you know, hopefully he's able to, to bounce back from these injuries early in his career and kind of stick with the saints. Yeah, that was, yeah, that's been kind of his problem. I mean, it happened when uh, it, it was his senior year, he didn't play in the uh, holiday bowl because he had th this really bad back injury and then couldn't really participate in any NFL stuff, but was able to, you know, sign with, with the saints and, um, you know, Chase is a great human being. I mean, having talked to him multiple times throughout his career and, um, it, you know, just watching him and, and how he handles himself out on the field. He's a leader. I mean, the problem with him is one injuries two, he's not the biggest linebacker, um, you know, at least as far as being in the, in, in the league, um, in college it works, but it, it, you know, it seems like he's maybe a little bit on the small side, but I love how dedicated he is to the point where Kyle, not a lot of people know this, unless you follow Chase on Instagram, he lives in his van in New Orleans. He has, he has this van that he lives in and he just parks it somewhere and, you know, wakes up and goes to practice and all that stuff. And that's, and that's how he lives when, when he's in New Orleans. I mean, he doesn't even have his own apartment um, because I, I think he gets it to the point where, you know, in this league, you don't know how long you're going to stay with the team. And for him to be able to, do of what he's done to try and work his way back, regardless of all of these injuries that, that he's had. It just speaks to, of, of what he's done as a linebacker at Utah and also as a safety and as a quarterback. And, um, you know, but I'm, I'm really happy for him. And I just hope that, that this is only the beginning of what is to be a long career. We're going to take a quick break. And on the other side, Trevor and I are going to discuss the first week of the NFL postseason, we're going to talk about these uh, these matchups, this super wild card weekend here on the Yards After College podcast powered by KSLSports.com. Welcome back to the Yards After College podcast powered by KSLSports.com. Once again, I'm your host, Kyle Ireland. And alongside me is Trevor Allen, the host of the Crimson Corner podcast, our Utah Utes insider at kslsports.com. And right now we're going to preview the super wild card weekend of the NFL postseason. Now, Trevor, I, I was taking a look at all of these games. You've got three on Saturday and then you've got another three on Sunday. And each of these matchups features some local players in the NFL. So let's let's just run through all the games. We're going to start with the first game on Saturday. You've got the Indianapolis Colts facing the Buffalo Bills on the road there in Western New York. You've got on the Colts side of things, you've got Julian Blackman, former Utah player, and then also you've got uh, Noah Tagiai from Hunter High School. They're going to be taking on Zach Moss, another former Utah guy, and then Taron Johnson out of Weber State. Now. I know that you follow both of these Utah guys on Twitter. Can you, uh, can you just talk about a little bit of uh, their conversation, their back and forth that happened following week 17? Well, you know, as guys who, uh, you know, came in together at Utah and then obviously um, ended up having great careers at Utah and, you know, uh, you know, was a, a part of that 2019 team. That's one of the best in Utah football history. Um, once, once the uh, Colts found out they were going to be playing the Bills, Julian Blackman tweeted at Zach Moss and said, uh, I'll, I'll see you soon. 
And then Zach said that, you know, he, he was looking forward to it. And, you know, they they have nothing but respect for each other. And I, I think it's going to be a really great matchup. I mean, Zach Moss is, has really come on strong. He ended up getting injured for a couple of weeks, had that turf toe injury. But, uh, you know, at least leading up in, in weeks 14, 15, and 16, he's had over 10 carries. He only had three in their win over Miami, but – um, I think a lot of that was just try, trying to rest them up after they were up by 30 and, uh, you know, on, on they go. But uh, Julian Blackman, I mean, if if Chase Young, Kyle, wasn't in the league, I would say that Julian Blackman is up there for rookie defensive uh, player of the year in, in the NFL. Um, he, he's been absolutely tremendous. And remember, he's he's coming off of a horrible injury that, that, that he had um, just over a year ago in the uh, Pac-12 championship game. And, you know, wasn't able to do anything at the combine and really couldn't do any any type of workouts leading up to the, the uh, draft. And the Colts took him in that third round, which kind of surprised us. It, it didn't really surprise him because the Colts did tell Julian and they were going to take him. But, I mean, just to see what happened, you know, he was, what, third, third string on the, the depth chart? I know that you follow the Colts a little bit better than I do, but – for him to be able to say has been tremendous to see. Yeah, you can catch that game between the Colts and the Buffalo Bills. You've got that on Saturday after, sorry, Saturday morning, that is, at 11.05 a.m. Mountain Time. Next game I wanted to touch on is the Los Angeles Rams versus the Seattle Seahawks. So as far as locals are concerned in this game, you've got the Terrell Burgess matchup unfortunately is not going to take place against the Seahawks because he's, he's out for the season, but you've got Matt Gay for the Rams as their kicker. And then on Seattle side of things, you've got Cody Barton, Marquise Blair, who's out for the season, unfortunately, but you've got Cody Barton, Bobby Wagner, and Brian Monet. What do you think of this matchup between the Rams and Seahawks? You've got a divisional matchup here in the first round of the postseason. Well, for once we have a, a Seattle defense that is terrible under under Pete Carroll but luckily they have one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL with with a Russell Wilson but um, you know just to see what LA's done I mean they, they they've kind of been up and down they finally found their running back and then he got hurt and and then uh, you know Jared Goff's been spotty but you can't ever count out Aaron Donald that dude's an absolute freak just seeing his photos of him working out the dude could probably pick up a car on his own um, but just seeing that 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 matchup, I think it's going to come down to because they they they've been in they're in the same division, so they've already played each other twice going in to this matchup. And um, I really like Seattle in this one because Russell is just one of those guys who has has been on this big stage many many times, and I, I think that he has enough weapons on offense to be able to get it done. And you know, hopefully Cody Barton will be able to get some run. Um, I know that he, he is one of the backup linebackers, but as you mentioned, Bobby Wagner, um, is on, is on that team. You're having to play behind him or even next to him, which I think is, is really, really good for Cody Barton's career to be able to learn from someone like him. The Rams are going to take on the Seahawks in Seattle at 2:40 mountain time on Fox next game. And the last game on Saturday for you is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You've got Tom Brady up against Alex Smith and the Washington football team. Also on Washington, you've got Jared Norris and Nate Orchard, a couple of uh, Utah guys as well to go along with Alex Smith. What do you make of, you know, just the fact that Alex is kind of battling back from this calf injury and the fact that, you know, Ron Rivera even this week was talking about potentially using a dual quarterback kind of system, rotating guys in if Alex Smith isn't 100% going into Saturday night. Well, even if he isn't, you know, full fully healthy I mean you got to look at it you know as long as Alex is willing to play which we all know he is because he, he's gone through worse um you know that that he is going to give it everything he has but and you know the one thing about about the matchup is can Washington and primarily Chase Young get pressure on Tom Brady because Tom Brady has thrown over 40 touchdowns this year and he's over 40 years old I mean again he has all the weapons he has Brown he has Evans he has Gronk he has um, Godwin I mean, it, the list goes on, but can you get pressure? But then on top of that, can you give Alex time? Because Tampa Bay has a really good front. You know, can you give Alex time to be able to go through his reads and to try and be able to, to keep the offense moving and to be really, really pro, uh, productive and to keep on moving the sticks? Um, I, I hope that, that that's the case. I mean, 
there wouldn't be probably, I mean, again, we're, we're just adding to this movie that I think will eventually be made about Alex Smith. If they can get a win over Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, especially because I, I just found out today, and I guess I probably shouldn't be surprised. This is the first wild card game that Tom Brady ha- has played in, in his career. That's incredible. The fact that he's actually been in the league this long, but if Alex Smith and company can take them down and they'd even have a winning record coming into the playoffs, that would be huge. You can catch Washington up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Saturday night, 615 Mountain Time. That game is going to broadcast on KSL TV. First game for you on Sunday, Trevor, is the Baltimore Ravens against the Tennessee Titans. Now, there aren't any local guys in the NFL from the Tennessee Titans this season. But on the Ravens side of things, you've got former Utah quarterback Tyler Huntley, who's gotten some run here in the last couple weeks as Lamar Jackson's backup. And then you've also got Tyson Williams. He's a practice squad guy for the Ravens there. Uh, What do you make of this matchup between the Ravens and Titans? You've seen them play multiple times now over the last couple of seasons, uh, postseason game last season as well, where the Titans kind of surprised everybody by beating the Ravens. Do you think Tennessee, you know, ends up taking down Lamar Jackson and Baltimore again? I mean, we all, we all thought that uh, Baltimore was going to go, go to the championship on, uh, in, in 2019 and not that obviously didn't happen. And Jackson's 0-2 in the playoffs as a starter. And, um, but Derrick Henry just passed 2000 yards um in one season which is an absolute freak and um you know I and and and, you know as far as the locals go I don't think Tyler Huntley is going to get any run because Trace McSorley the uh, quarterback from Penn State he's actually I think going to be able to come off the IR so that'll move him to the backup spot and then Tyler to to number three but still just the fact that Tyler Huntley has been able to play this year I think has been awesome and a really great story because he, he was one of the best quarterbacks in all college football last year I would say probably top 15 um, and he didn't even get, get drafted and um, but ended up going to Baltimore. And even though they have their, their starting quarterback and Jackson for years to come and um, you know, Baltimore, they, they've been really spotty, Kyle. I mean, it, it, it's hard to kind of grasp on what they're going to do. And, you know, so is the Titans, but as long as you can keep Derrick Henry running, I mean, you really shouldn't be losing because the guy is an absolute truck um he is tough he's an ox type type running back who who can stiff arm with you know the best of them and you know I just feel like that teams are now starting to figure out Baltimore's offense with Jackson running and potentially passing and um you know and that's and that's kind of become the problem with him for this year so I I think honestly if I was just to guess I, I think that the Titans get it done you can watch the Ravens and Titans play against each other on Sunday morning at 11.05 a.m. Mountain Time. That game's going to broadcast on ABC and ESPN. Next game for you, first afternoon game of Sunday, is the Chicago Bears up against the uh, New Orleans Saints. Now, I think this is an interesting matchup. You've got Jalen Johnson, Patrick Scales, uh, Utah and Utah State guys up against Marcus Williams, Chase Hansen, Taysom Hill, and Caden Ellis. So you've got the Saints here. You've got Drew Brees potentially last season, last playoff run of his career, wanting to, you know, get that last Super Bowl ring. You've got Marcus Williams, who was on the the wrong side of a playoff, uh, you know, game ending play a couple of seasons ago against the Vikings. You've got Taysom Hill. Is he the guy next season taking over for Drew Brees? He's kind of back in that gadget role, the the jack of all trades kind of player that he's been for the majority of his career after starting a few games for the saints and Jalen Johnson. We talked about this earlier, Trevor, you and I off the, off the podcast about how he's been kind of banged up here towards the end of the season. What do you think of this matchup between the bears and the saints? Do the saints potentially get upset by the bears or, you know, is the saints defense too much for a Mitchell Trubisky led bears offense? I'm I'm not sold on on, on the Bears' offense as much, uh, especially in the playoffs. Um, New Orleans has you know been able to to get you know some wins, but they've they've had to do it with you know Drew Brees getting banged up, and you know I just realized that uh, Marcus Williams hasn't played since Week 15, um, and he is on the I- injury report, but he did practice full on Thursday, and um, Jalen Johnson was limited in practice on Thursday, and you know he's actually been out since Week 14, I believe. And so, you know, if, if, if they can get them healthy, I think that that's a really good matchup because as you said about Marcus Williams, you know, a couple of years ago against the Vikings um, in that, in that playoff game, 
you know, just that Marcus has been a better player because of it. He hasn't let it hurt his, his stock and, and, you know, his ability to make plays. I mean, he picked off what Tom Brady a couple of times this year and um, just ha- has done a really, really good job of, of just kind of, you know, keeping that at, at, at the rearview mirror of, you know, of what happened a couple of years ago and, you know, for him to be able to get uh, three, three picks this year and obviously one in each game against Tampa Bay, I think has been awesome to see, but I don't know. I, 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 I was on this podcast a few weeks ago, Kyle, and you, you asked me who I was still going with. And I still feel like New Orleans is the best team in the NFC. I feel like Green Bay has really surprised me over the last few weeks, but I, I'm still going to stick with, with New Orleans. And so I, I believe that they're going to be able to get it done against the Bears. The Bears are going to take on the Saints on Sunday, 2.40 Mountain Time in the afternoon. You can watch that game on CBS now, the last wild card game for you on Sunday, it's going to be a matchup between the Cleveland Browns, Pittsburgh Steelers. They played against each other last week. Now, the, the Steelers, they didn't have all their starters in. You didn't see Big Ben, but the, the Browns ended up getting into the postseason first time since 2001, I believe, maybe 2002. I can't remember, but it, it broke the longest drought in the Someone. NFL. And uh, you've got on the Browns, you've got Sione Takitaki, you've got Porter Gustin, uh, Jojo Natson, unfortunately, isn't going to play in that game because he's been out for the season due to injury. But no guys, as far as locals are concerned, on the Steelers. But I like this matchup between the Steelers and uh, and the Browns. You've got, you know, the Browns who have just been aching for the playoffs. They want to see that success. And they've got an 11-5 and record this season. And then you've got the Steelers who really were just so hot to start the year and then just down the stretch ended up losing four games out of their last five, I believe. And so you, you've got a team who's, you know, really just wanting that success versus a team that's kind of, you know, trying to get back on track, so to speak, to, to finish off the season. What do you make of this final matchup of the uh, AFC wildcard race? Well, Kyle, who would have thought that Cleveland would have put everything together when Odell Beckham Jr. went out for the year? I mean, it, it's been crazy how, how Baker Mayfield has really stepped up his game since Odell Beckham Jr. went out with that season-ending injury early in, in the season. But I'm not sold on, on Pittsburgh. I know that they started out, what, 11-0, and 0, and as you mentioned, lost four of their last five. And that one uh, was against the Colts, and they, they were down 21 or 24 points. Sorry to pour salt in the wound there, Kyle. It's definitely one of those games where which quarterback's going to step up. And I, I just i am not sold on Pittsburgh's ability to, to move forward forward and, and have a deep playoff run and so you know I didn't think I'd ever say this Kyle, but I think Cleveland is actually going to win a playoff game I didn't expect that Trevor I didn't expect that from you uh but I think that's my my upset pick of the weekend as well because I, I agree with you I I think that the way that Cleveland's playing right now I just have more confidence in them than I do in the Pittsburgh Steelers but you can watch that game on Sunday night Sunday night football, uh, 6.15 Mountain Time. You can watch that game on KSL TV. And then next week on the podcast, we're going to recap all of these matchups, see who's going to be playing in the divisional round of the NFL postseason. Last thing before I set you loose today, Trevor, I wanted to get your thoughts on a couple of Utah guys returning back to the University of Utah in 2021. Mitch Harper and I touched on Brant Keithy's decision to return to Utah last week. But I also wanted to get your thoughts on Nick Ford and his decision to come back to Utah. Yeah, I I wasn't uh, really shocked with uh, either guy, to be honest with you. I I feel like Brant um, wasn't utilized the way that that he should have within the offense. But I think a lot of that was dealing with all the quarterback issues that that Utah had coming in with, you know, Cam Rising uh, getting hurt in that early in that second quarter in the opener. And then Jake Bentley just being really, really spotty at times and ended up getting benched in that last uh, game of the year. But, um, you know, Brant still had a really nice year. The only thing is that he didn't get into the end zone. And so I feel like um, it was good for him to be able to build off of the way that that defenses are going to look at him and the way that they're going to try and shut him down. Um, And I I also feel like that having Britton Covey play the way that that he did also took away some touches from Brant Keithy, to be honest with you. And, I feel like Utah is going to need to be able to throw the ball a little bit more and be able to utilize Brant in other ways. Um, So I wasn't really shocked by it. Um, You know, for him to get a a full season under his belt, I think will be huge for him. 
as long as he can stay healthy, which he has for the most part of his career. And then for, for a Nick Ford, I wasn't shocked because I don't frankly think that he is ready for the league yet. Um, you know, he, he's a very versatile offensive lineman, um, can play tackle, guard, center, um, and ended up playing center the last couple of games of the year uh, as Orlando Amano was um, injured. And, you know, he, he has struggled, especially in that Colorado game when it was, you know, frozen, um, frozen field and, you know, it was snow and, you know, just had a really hard time snapping the ball. And I, I feel like that Nick is, is going to ha- have to have another really good year for him to be in, in that conversation to get drafted. But I think that regardless of what happens, I, I think he would have landed on a team um, as far as training camp roster if, if he would have left this year. But I, I don't think he was ready for the NFL. Now, there's only one other guy who I, I think uh, ha- has that possibility to leave rather than coming back, and that's Devin Lloyd. He hasn't made up his mind yet. But uh, I, I think right now Devin's probably on the fence. And if I were him, I'd come back one more year. He's the host of the Crimson Corner podcast, our Utah Utes insider at kslsports.com. He is Trevor Allen. You can follow him on Twitter at Trevor A. Sports and then on Instagram at Trevor Allen KSL. I'm going to include Trevor, uh, the University of Utah Crimson Corner podcast, uh, the link to it in my show notes so everybody can find your podcast and give that a listen. Uh, big news with the uh, University of Utah basketball. I mean, it seems like their schedule's crazy. So all you Utah fans, check out all the scheduling changes, their canceled game against Oregon State, all on the Crimson Corner podcast and read more about that on the KSL Sports app. Thanks again for joining the podcast today, Trevor, and we'll catch you again soon. Kyle, it's always good to be on. Thank you so much for, for, for the uh, invite.